space is Sims, and we are back with more Taisho Alice. And the last part was short because we got a bad ending because I chose one of the only, I think, two options that was wrong. <laughs> um, so uh, I pulled up a guide to get it. So I we made all the good right choices. There was, honestly, up to that point, there was only one other place we could have gotten a bad ending. So like... And that was right off the bat if we chose to give up instead of asking Kaguya to help us. Makes sense. All the other ones, there's no, I guess, right or wrong answers. Probably you get just maybe less points for him. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't... The guy that's really weird because it just shows you the options. So it'll say, like, say, for example, the first choice was give up or ask Kaguya to help, right? It just shows give up with a line through it and it says that's a bad ending. Then it says ask Kaguya to help. Then it says the next choice, the next choice. It just lists out the answers you should choose and then only shows you when there's an option that would be a bad ending. Um, so like, it's a little confusing and it's not the best. And I guess I don't, I can't tell from this if there are different good endings. I guess I'm going to have to look that up too. But from what it looks like in here, it seems like, maybe there's a good end, the normal ending, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six bad endings. And we literally got the first, the second of the, six. well, no, 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 there's probably only five, because I think when, I thought that was a spider, she's a bird feather. Um, I think when we, when it asked him, should I do the arranged marriage or whatever, I think if you say yes, or it's his choice, you get a bad ending. So we were supposed to say no. Hmm. Anyway, so I'm going to... Oh, I was like, where the hell is my thing? I'm going to skip through this till we get to our... We're starting right at the last part where I saved. So the same place we were in the last part um, to start because this is where we diverged and went the wrong way. So we're perfectly fine here. So would you change your personality for someone else? Oh, okay. No, yeah, no, 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 no. This is right. Wait. This is where it's confusing because you don't know. I see yes. I see very yes. So we made the right choice with Alice there. Smile wordlessly, which is what we did when he was asking about the glass thing. And then there's yes, bad ending. So I think this is where yes, bad ending comes in. So if we do yes, we get another bad ending here. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six bad endings. So literally I chose the one fucking thing out of the four options that gave us a bad ending. Man, I suck. Anyway, so we are supposed to say no, which is what I said. And then it's his choice. I'm assuming we're supposed to say yes, because the next thing I see is it's his choice being crossed off. It's a bad ending. And then I just see yes. So I'm assuming I hate this about this guy. The answers are literally would be like, no, yes, it's his choice. And it would say, it's his choice is the bad ending. And then it would just say, no. and you don't know because there's so many times in the guide where, or how many times where the questions are yes, no. So the guide literally says, yes, yes, neither a cat. Yes, yes, very yes. Smile wordlessly. Yes is marked off as a bad ending. No, it's his choice is a bad ending. Yes, this is a bad ending. This is, I guess, the right one. This is a bad ending. It's not very cohesive. It kind of is terrible. But it's just the one that's on Steam, and it was the one that I went to first. So we'll probably have to find a better one. But Because it's really hard to read is what it is. It's not like it's broken up with, here are your choices. This is what you should, like, choice six. Or some people would say, should you encourage Cinderella to go through the arranged marriage? Yes, that's the answer you should choose. It's his choice leads to a bad ending. And then you know what I mean? So I'm assuming we're supposed to say yes. So here we go. Anyway. Yes, I do. Why? I can't tell you. All right, then. Am I? At my response, he grabbed the blowtorch off his workbench and began to fidget with it. The next instant... What are you doing? Cinderella had set the entire folder aflame. Wait, 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 wait. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I leapt up to stop him. Sprained ankle be damned. This is the same thing. It holds no value to me. What do you mean? I don't know, just a feeling. There in the firelight, Cinderella looked every bit as sad and lonely as he did in the paparazzi photo. This is the same thing that happened. Wait. Did we just get the same fucking ending? Yeah! 
So maybe we were supposed to choose no. See, this is what I'm talking about with this guide. It's really fucking stupid. Because you see, for the last choice that we made, right? Yes is a bad ending. Which I'm assuming was the, would you change your personality? Yes or no? So... The next option, no, should be the right. And this said, yeah, I don't fucking understand this guide at all. Because, for example, the first choice we had give up or ask Kaguya to help, right? It shows both of those options on here. And it shows give up as being a bad ending. So it shows ask Kaguya to help. So, okay, first choice. And then each one other one, it just tells you the right answer. So this one. All right. I'm going to find another guide. I can't really pull up anything because it's going to show in the thing, the way that I, my recording thing is. So I'm going to be back in a minute. I'm going to find a better guide because this one is really fucking terrible. It's not clear. It's not like clearly we made the same fucking mistake. So maybe we were supposed to say no. I don't know. This one's bad, <laughs> dude, because we didn't make anything else. We didn't do anything else wrong. That should have been the only part. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find another guide, and we're going to see. I'll be back in a second. Okay, well, we're fucked, because there are literally no other guides. There is one that is literally just walls and walls and walls and walls and walls and walls of text, where it might have a choice here and there, but it's like... So I don't know what to do here. Okay, so let's just try no, because not sure isn't in here. No is in here, but like... I mean, I would assume that was supposed to be to go to the other one. But it can't be yes, because yes was wrong. So I don't know. Unless we've made a really, really wrong choice somewhere else where I would have... It should have led to a bad ending, or we just don't have enough points. So we'll try this, and if it doesn't work, I guess we're just going to start from the fucking beginning and go all the way through and make the right choices. I don't know what to do here. So, no. I don't particularly want you to get married. All right, then. Okay, we're doing this again, and we're getting the bad ending. Okay. So we obviously made a wrong choice somewhere along the way. And that doesn't make a difference. Because there is no other option. So we were going to get a bad ending no matter what the fuck we did. We must not have enough love points with him, is what I'm assuming. We must have made a lot of wrong choices and not gotten enough points around that thing. Because that's a bad ending. Not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. So we... <laughs> Alright, it has nothing to do with this. So there we go. Now we know. Alright, so anyway, I'm trying to like... Come on, hurry the fuck up. That's great. Come on. Alright, let's continue with the very first save we made. And we're just going to start from the very beginning, I guess. Because... So give up leads to a bad ending. So we're supposed to ask him to help us. I'm going to say we made a lot of these choices, so I don't know where we went wrong. You know what I'm saying? We must have... It must be because we haven't made... We've made all the other fucking choices, so we don't know what the fuck to do, guys. I don't know! Um, it's got to be... It's just like, fuck you. It doesn't matter what you say to him. Okay, so... And that's what I said. So I'm guessing it's just it's just got to be other choices that we've made that maybe we didn't have enough points. But it shouldn't be like, well, this option leads you to a bad ending. It's pretty much, you're going to get a bad ending no matter what you say. Okay, so we're supposed to stay quiet here. Okay. <laughs> I decided not to comment. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, nothing. Annoyed, Cinderella averted his gaze. Okay. I hate that it doesn't, you know what, you, well, I guess because it says previously read, so that's probably it. Yes. Suggest rebranding the cafe. This is what I did. I, what, one choice and I fucked this? I don't understand this. Oh, nope. Okay, here we go. I'm impressed. Okay, so, all right. Okay, we've made a few things, but so far two options we've made that were wrong. Two. You know, I'm actually really impressed. What? Man, you're so unpredictable. I mean, this big feast is essentially a free gift from you, right? and is intentionally seeking his confirmation. Sure, I guess. I'm no Scrooge, you know. I'm hardly going to make a, make a street urchin pay. Now that he'd given his word, I grinned mischievously. Oh, Cinderella, you're such a good guy. Anyway, I have to go do something. Be right back. 
With that, I got up from the table and walked outside, leaving Cinderella behind. What? Hey! Where the hell are you going? Twenty minutes later. Look who I found! Oh. You, ac you accidentally found this giant crowd. I don't think so. Explain yourself. Now. Cinderella pointed at the people standing behind me. Men, women, and children of all ages. They are all people I recruited off the street to come back with me. Don't worry. I was perfectly discreet. Oh, and I got permission from the staff, too. Okay, everyone. Go ahead and take a seat wherever you like. Hold on. I gotta... It's really hard to do this because I've got my, like, finger... I'm trying to hold the place in the guide because, like I said, the guide is, like, really fucking hard to read. Um... So I'm just going to try to move, put a little post-it so I can kind of slowly move it down so I can see where I am. So I don't have to try to figure it out because there's a lot of just yeses coming up, so. I gestured around the empty dining area. I don't care about your discretion. What I want to know is what they're doing here. Oh, I invited them. When they heard you were paying for a feast, they all gladly agreed to come. What? Cinderella scowled, confused. This was a much better answer. All right, all right. Meanwhile, I turned back to the crowd. Guess what, everyone? My good friend Cinderella here is going to treat you to lunch today. He's ordered one of everything off the menu, so come and collect any dish you like. We're not going to eat it all. This is smart. This is what I'm saying to donate, but she's even smarter. Okay. The crowd cheered and applauded Cinderella. I tilted my head and shot him a sassy smirk. Now the restaurant's food won't go to waste. These people will get a free meal, and we can go get their opinions as part of our recon mission. Plus... It'll help to promote you and your cafe. It's like four birds with one stone. I winked. You've really done it now, haven't you? Whatever might you be talking about? I tried to play innocent, but he flicked me on the forehead. It kind, kind of ended up like a party, didn't it? I thought back to the lively dining area and giggled. And you're the one who lied and told them it was my birthday. Cinderella scowled sulkily. We had come to the Looking Glass Lake. It was a quiet place with crisp, refreshing air. The perfect spot for a post-meal jaunt. Well, I had to tell them it was part of your surprise party, or else they'd wonder why everything was free. I'll admit, it felt like a stupid plan at first, but everyone jumped on board surprisingly quick. Why the hell would I spend my own money to treat a bunch of complete strangers on my own birthday? What kind of surprise party is that? I understood where you're coming from, but think of it this way. Now they'll all see you as a generous guy. Besides, everyone had a lot of fun. The guests, the restaurant staff, even me. I was quite satisfied with myself for finding a solution to the excess food problem. Yeah, no kidding. I bet you guys had a blast on my dime. Contrary to my satisfaction, however, Cinderella was still displeased. Did I go too far? Look, I apologize for doing this behind your back. I'm really sorry. You can take the money out of my wages to make up for it. Like that'll cover it. Do you realize how much money I spent back there? N no? How much was it? I promise I'll pay you back as soon as I can. I'm sorry. Huh. Now you're sorry. Did you run out of snarky little comments? No snark here. I see now that I was in the wrong. Huh. Cinderella scoffed and looked away. Listen, I... I don't care about the money. I was the one who ordered the whole menu and said I was it said it was a gift for me. Obviously, you're free to do with it as you please. Will you forgive me? I was never mad about it to begin with. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. What's so funny? Cinderella scowled at me. Oh, nothing. This lake is really pretty, isn't it? I hastily changed the subject and turned away. The waves crashed against the shore as if it were a miniature ocean. Yeah, I like it. It's nice to get away from all the noise. What do you do most days anyway? Okay, so this is all stuff we read. Okay, cool. That was much better, actually, so... I didn't want to be impressed by your being an asshole, so... Okay, so we still meet the wizard. Interesting. So maybe that was, like, the main point. But it seems really odd. You know what I'm saying? Like... That you get a bad ending. Oh. I, and I'm supposed to say yes here. Okay. Here you are. I placed the freshly brewed milk tea in front of Cinderella. Okay, so we missed quite a few. So I guess it we didn't have enough love points, so we got a bad ending. Thanks a bunch. 
He'll never learn if you keep spoiling him. In contrast to Cinderella's smug satisfaction, Gretel looked pissed. Aw, come on. He's probably tired from walking around all day. I decided to defend Cinderella, and technically, he was walking around all day bribing people to come here, so just saying. Exactly. Ha! How do you like that, Gretel? Isn't our employer-employee relationship something special? We're bound by the unbreakable bonds of cold, hard cash. Disgusting. I just threw open my mouth a little. <laughs> it was fucking worth it. It's just how the world works. Gretel promptly turned his fearsome glare on me. God, you're always so pissy. Pull that stick out of your ass and just relax. Well, maybe I wouldn't be so pissy if I wasn't at the mercy of your fanciful whims every moment of every day. You must be so proud of yourself, wandering around town while the rest of us work like dogs. Yeah, well, I think I've earned it. Here, I bought you some... Bombkuchen? And sardines. You're not getting enough calcium with all that sugary crap you eat. And this'll help your stamina. Because we were nice to him, he's nice to be... Oh my god, this is so cute! Alright, we fucked up big. Oh, I fucked up big by doing all the opposite... Okay. As he spoke, he pulled out a metal tin of sardines in a bakery box and set them on the counter. Sardines? Where on earth would you even buy those? I decided not to ask. No thank you. Gretel smacked the tin of sardines off the counter and got to his feet. Hey, come on! That was uncalled for, so instead of pissing off Cinderella, we piss off Gretel, and this is actually better. You're an imbecile. Hey, Gretel! Oh, Gretel, wait! What about your milk tea? He ignored me as I stopped to pick up the sardine tin. Stooped. A little punk didn't forget to swipe the bomb kitchen, though. That's the prince of desserts for you, I suppose. Shouldn't we go after him? I casually set the tin on the shelf. Eh, leave him be. Bird, what? What you want? Are you just playing? Why are you screaming? Well, okay. In that case, I'll bring his tea to his room. In that way, he can enjoy it with his bomb kitchen. I don't know if I'm saying that right anyway. I started to prep the new cup of milk tea. I'll save it for later. We're about to have dinner. I know that, but I can't just ignore him. Not after all he's done for me these past few days. But then again, I guess he might need some time to cool down. Maybe I'll just hang out with you for a while. I'm your second choice, is that it? No! If anything, you're my first choice. Anyway, I hastily cleared my throat. He really was our first choice in the game. Cinderella, it's not nice to bully your baby brother like that. I encourage you to have a nice long talk with him later. I can come with you if you prefer. I know things, and this is between him and me. In that case, I hope you resolve this quickly. Scowling bitterly, he karate chopped me in the head. How's the cafe been doing? It's doing really great, actually. We've been completely slammed every day. I rubbed my head where he whacked it. <laughs> she doesn't even say anything about it. She's just like, take my lumps. Oh, good, good. Anything you're running low on or need me to buy. We're good for right now. Oh, but we're starting to run low on olive oil. We have a spare bottle, but I'd like to get another one considering how often we use it. Oh, and I was thinking it'd be nice to have some flowers for each table. I got it. I'll make it happen. Awesome. Thank you. By the way, sir, I've been wondering. What is it now? Why is it that we keep getting so, much, so many customers every day? So it's the same conversation, but we didn't chase him down to ask him. Who cares? It's a good thing, isn't it? Well, yes, it certainly can't hurt for the cafe to have customers, but don't you think it's all happening a little too fast? I know we're in a great location and the menu's getting rave reviews, but there's no way pure word of mouth would bring in this many people. Would you happen to know what's going on, Cinderella? Meets me. His response was vague. Too vague. The only difference is the background, so I kind of wish they would let you skip it because you technically read it, but... Evidently, he wasn't going to come clean without a little encouragement. Go ahead and play dumb, then. I have ways of dealing with people like you. Right. I figured you wouldn't know. So anyway, I'm thinking this might be a divine miracle from God. The only other possibility I can think of is that some good Samaritan somewhere is pulling strings behind the scenes. Interesting idea. Some guy's been staging the whole thing just for you. Just for me? Do you think it's someone I know? He grimaced awkwardly. He'd walked right into my trap, of course. Your toes are freaking cold. You need to sit over here by the computer. Get your toes warm. Anyway, I think I'll go take Gretel his tea now. I set the freshly brewed cup of milk tea on a tray. Hey, wait. 
Don't worry, I'm not going to tell him anything. I press my index finger to my lips with a wink. And tell him what? Oh, I don't know. But whatever it is, you know Gretel's smart enough to figure it out without any hints. Anyway, I'll be right back. Aha, that one we got right. Neither we got right, okay. Well, now I want to ask, say it's a burb, because it is a burb, and I'm mad I can't say it's a burb. Well, when we're going to get... I'm supposed to be a cat. Do you accept this gift? Of course we do. Okay, good. I was like, of course we do. Hold on. It's just a lot of yeses. Yes. <laughs> very yes, that's the right answer, and that's fucking hilarious. And there's no way very yes couldn't have been the right answer, because that's just too funny to be, like... See, so we did... We only got a few things wrong, so I'm very confused about this. Um, I'm it, Again, it's just got to be the amount of points, I guess, but... Like, because we answered a few things wrong, so we... Very yes... Smile wordlessly. So this is where it says yes leads to a bad ending. Which is why we choose no. And then I'm confused. So, which we did. We chose no. So we did the right thing. No. Now this is like, it's his choice is a bad ending. This says, it says, so the way it goes, all the other options. Yes, very yes, smile wordlessly. Okay, just single lines. Then there's a line for yes, for the last choice we made with a cross that says bad ending. Then the next one says no. So that means we should have answered no for that question. Unless for some reason on this one, they're saying, you know, quick save just in case. So unless they're trying, they just said yes is a bad ending, you should use the other one. But the first option, give up or ask Kaguya for help, they give you both answers. They show you which one is wrong and then they give you the one that's right. So I would assume when it says yes and then no, it means yes is the bad ending because it shows crossed out and then no is the right one. So it's his choice is a bad ending. Yes is the right answer. Or why it doesn't tell you any of the other ones would lead to bad endings. So I'm going to go with yes again. <gasps> okay. Actually, I want to go to quick load again. Hold on. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we tell Alice's doors... Took you long enough. Okay. As soon as he opened the door, I cut him off and walked straight inside. Good night. See you tomorrow. Okay. He took one look at me and left my room with another word. As soon as I shut the door behind me, my emotions overwhelmed me in a tidal wave and I collapsed on the spot. My heart was pounding out of control. Does he know? The manila folder looked an awful light like the one I received. Of course, he never saw the contents, so I couldn't be sure. So the same thing happens. He burns it, regardless of what you say. Okay. All right. What was he thinking burning it like that? What do I do? The answer, of course, was nothing. It was out of my hands now. All this time I'd been under a magic spell. The spell cast upon me. Okay, okay. The spell would be broken. Okay, now this is where it happens. Okay. So someone's asking who's there. Oh, it's him. It's me. I'm home, Dad. Oh, hey there, Cinderella. It's not often you come by for a visit. Yeah, I know, I just... I need to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about the arranged marriage, by chance? I, yeah, that. What do you think? She's a good girl, isn't she? She's actually the daughter of an old friend of mine. I haven't seen her in a while, but with her background, she's a catch. You need to settle down and... About that, I'm thinking of saying no. What, don't like her? You might change your mind once you met her, you know. And don't worry, I'll handle everything. They seem enthusiastic, too. Nothing but nice things to say about you. And now you just need to meet... Oh, look, that's not it. I don't like or dislike her. That doesn't even matter. I'm just not interested. I don't mind meeting her or talking to her. But I'm not going to marry her. We told him yes. This is interesting. I'm still young, Dad. And there's still so much I want to do in life. So what's the rush? Don't be selfish, Cinderella. I don't care if you're not interested. It's our only option. And Dad, I get that, but I... Oh. 
It's her only option because they probably don't have money. Relax, Cinderella. You have nothing to worry about. Once the two of you are married, everything will work itself out. Because if he says no to the marriage, then he'll... Oh. Ever since that fateful night, my relationship with Cinderella changed slightly. And that's it. Slowly turn it. You want the tip to get nice and round. Like this? This is so cute. We get a CG. I slowly rotated the glass rod under the blowtorch. Yes, perfect. Watch the flame now. And don't burn yourself. And don't worry, I won't. Change number one. After work each day, Cinderella would tutor me in glass crafting. Today I was practicing a technique called glass blowing. Okay, now wrap the glass around this. He was a good teacher, but the hands-on nature of the work meant he spent every lesson, each lesson very, very close to me. I acted like it was no big deal, of course, but truth be told, it was distracting. Man, this is tricky. My palms were sweaty, and not just from the heat of the flame. And you're not wrong, but that's what makes it worthwhile, you know? Yeah, it feels like you can never make the same thing twice. Like stepping into a river. All right, pipe down, Pocahontas. You gotta focus or you'll screw up. <laughs> I fucking love him. Or, right. I took a deep breath and willed myself to focus on the glass. Once I gathered the glass into the blowing iron, it was time for the next stage of the process. <laughs> As I blew into the blowing iron, the glass began to swell up like a big bobble. A big bubble. My nerves had me trembling, but Cinderella guided me carefully. And that's it. And there you go. You're doing great. And now once you've got your bubble, you're going to want to put it back under the flame and start turning again. Back under the flame and start turning. Cinderella took these lessons very seriously. It was, patient it was patently obvious how much he loved glass crafts. I could hear it in his voice, see it in his eyes. Done. I now had a little ball of glass at the end of my iron. Not half bad, me. And don't touch it or you'll burn yourself. And next we do the ash glaze and then we let it cool, right? Yep, better hurry up or it'll crack. Uh-oh, we don't want that. I cut the glass ball from the tip of the blowing iron with my shears, then placed it in a bucket of ash. Hold on. I actually want to save because... Um... We already got that bad ending, and we can easily go back and get the other bad ending that was before that one. But this is where all the other bad endings start happening, so if we don't save here... We're going to have to skip through the whole entire game. We'll go to the beginning, get the first bad ending. We can go to that last save where we got all the wrong endings and probably get the bad ending by choosing yes instead of no. Yeah, I changed my personality. We've already seen the It's His Choice one. Now, to get to these ones instead of skipping through the whole game, we just start here. So, smart me. Anyway. Phew! Now we just wait, huh? Hey, you're good with your hands, you know that. I'm impressed at your progress. How was the shape? Was it lumpy or anything? You know... Not at all. Maybe I've got a knack for it or something. Not to toot my own horn. Toot toot. But during our last lesson, I'd made the cutest little glass kitten. And now here I was with yet another success under my belt. Hey, you're so good it's boring to watch. And teaching you is too easy. And you're not even humble about it. You're just jealous because I'm naturally gifted. How sad. I pretended to wipe away a tear. And don't get full of yourself, punk. He bonked me on the head and I giggled. Honestly, I'm only doing this well because I've got you for a teacher. You're extremely patient and thorough. Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of the rest so you run along to bed. He averted his gaze and started to put the tools away. I guess it is getting late. I looked up at the clock to find it was nearly midnight. Yeah, tonight's lesson took a little longer. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with me, especially since I know you must be exhausted after working a full day. Following his lead, I helped him tidy up the workbench. Nah, I'm fine. If anything, I'm more worried about you. No, no, I feel like we've had this conversation before, but I don't really get tired when I'm doing what I enjoy. Right. I mean it. I looked up at him and our eyes met. Say, wanna go shopping with me tomorrow? Shopping? Sure. Can I I can carry their I can carry your bags for you or whatever you need. When are we going? After work? And now we'll just close the store for the day. I blinked in surprise. This is sudden. Are you sure? If you think about it, we've been working nonstop for ages now. We never give ourselves any days off. 
Oh, you're right. Gosh, I didn't even think about that. I've been so distracted with work and everything else, I totally overlooked it. Somehow the four of us had entirely forgotten the concept of time off. Why not a goddamn sweatshop? Why need to establish at least one day off per week? But if we do that, we'll be missing out on profits. Besides, it's not like anyone's complained about it. Why are you talking like some corrupt CEO? You're the one who told me to pull myself up by my bootstraps and make the cafe a nationwide success. I was just exaggerating. I don't really care that much about profit. The labor costs aren't really hurting my bottom line much anyway. Benefits of a family-run business, eh? And the point is, it won't kill us to close the cafe once a week. You work too much as it is. You think so? I tilted my head in contemplation. Truth be told, I barely even felt fatigued. Cinderella shot me a withering stare. Look here, twerp. What is it? I just want to run the streets with you, all right? Cafe's closed tomorrow. End of story. I'm the owner and what I say goes. Got it? G got it. I flinched as he pointed sternly in my face. Good. Oh yeah, I meant to give you this. He grabbed a shopping bag, pulled something out, and put it on my head. Is this a hat? Yep. Just as I thought. It looks great on you. I must have a sixth sense for these things. He nodded, evidently pleased with himself. What? Don't you like it? Oh no, I love it. I was just thinking. See, you only gave me that lovely brooch yesterday. You see, the glass crafting lessons weren't the only big change as of late. This right here? This was the other recent development. If you don't want it, you can just toss it. No, I do want it. I really, really appreciate it. Then quit worrying, will you? Times like these, you ought to just say thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. Holding the brim of my cap, I bowed politely. Good. Look at how happy he is. Change number two. Cinderella had started to shower me with gifts. Because he doesn't want to marry that other girl because he's in love with me, but he doesn't know that other girl is me! Hey, you've got him wrapped around your little finger, don't you? This was the first thing out of Snow White's mouth when I went to consult the boys for advice. He really looks that way, doesn't it? Yep, I get the feeling he'll keep going until he digs himself into a financial hole. Whose fault would that be, though? His own, obviously. But if you let him go that far, it's not exactly a good look for you, either. Hmm. I folded my arms and pondered this. How was I meant to handle it? If you don't want these gifts, it's kinder in the long run to just say no. But that would hurt his ego. Besides, who doesn't like free stuff? Well then, what's the problem? And buying stuff is basically a hobby of his anyway. His spending habits could use some work, though. Agreed. Like the time he bought that luxury car when he doesn't even drive. Or how he buys jewelry for no reason. He doesn't even like jewelry. He should just stick to those cheapo glass figurines he loves so much. Oh, you know about that? Of course I do. He's my brother. As it turned out, the two of them did actually care for their older brother. And those little gifts you've been getting. And they'll start getting bigger and fancier, I'm sure of it. And designer handbags, cars, maybe even property. Oh gosh, I don't want him to go that far. Frankly, none of these gifts were things I really needed. Houses and cars? Infinitely more so. I just wish I could do something for him in return. I kind of assumed you had. I don't know. I mean, I've been trying. The two brothers exchanged a glance, then shrugged in unison. They're like, I thought you were having sex with him. And you're like, no, he's just trying to get me into bed. And they're like, obviously, I'm not going to do it till I get a house and a car. <laughs> like, duh. Now that I know that that's a possibility, definitely holding out. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's douchey. Funny, though. Look, I don't know what it's led him to shower you in gifts, and frankly, I don't want to know. However, if he's profiting off our unpaid labor in order to waste that money on you, then those tick gifts are technically from us, not him. Do you want me to make it up to you? How? After a pause, I wiggled my fingers. With a massage? No, thank you. Everyone says I'm really good, though. As I spoke, I donned my brand new cap. In the mirror, I could see one very giddy girl beaming back at me. How's it look? It looks great on you. I give us a smile, Alice. Okay. At his request, I flashed him my pearly whites. Hey, not bad. Really? It's not all stiff and awkward looking. 
I pushed up the corners of my lips with my fingers. And nervous, are we? Of course I am. It's been three whole weeks since the last time I went into town with Cinderella. The thought makes me so giddy, but at the same time, I'm so anxious. Yes, yes, spare me the theatrics. Coming from the drama queen herself. Gretel interrupted me with a look of abject annoyance on his face. Just then a thought occurred to me, and I decided to change the subject. What about you guys? Are you going anywhere today? After all of this, after all, this was a rare day off for the four of us. Frankly, the two of them ought to get out of the house for a change. Maybe go on a date with a cute girl. <laughs> Maybe go on a date with each other. I was like, wait, what? Alice, would you like me to go and fetch the other Alice for you? Apparently I had struck a nerve. N no, please, anything but that. I'm sorry. I immediately fell to my hands and knees in submission. I could already picture what Alice might say. Gee, thanks for rubbing your perfect life in my face. I always knew you were sick and twisted on the inside. As a token of my thanks, you may prostrate yourself before me as I recount all the worst breakup stories I know. Anything to put a damper on your high spirits. Yeah, I'll pass. I looked up to find Gretel wearing his most threatening smile. Eep. Oh, we should be back later tonight. Oh, and I don't have much to offer in the way of lunch since I didn't know what anyone's plans were. My voice wavered hesitantly. And that's fine. We can look after ourselves. Oh, and I left Alice a note telling him I wouldn't be home. Understood. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. I better get going now. Right as I got to my feet. Oh, Alice, your ribbon's crooked. Snow White helpfully indicated my ribbon. It is, you're right. Upon inspection, sure enough, the ribbon on my sleeve was completely crooked. As I contemplated what to do about it, Snow White walked over and quietly reached for my ribbon. Apparently, he wanted to help me fix it. Unfortunately, this didn't go so well. As soon as he untied the ribbon, he froze in place like a deer in headlights. What's wrong, Snow White? I don't know how to do this. Oh, right. I'd forgotten just how little he was generally capable of. <laughs> it's like a little baby deer who can barely fucking walk on his little baby legs. Well, that's okay. I can just do it myself. But this fell on deaf ears. Snow White was off at his own little world. Him versus the ribbon. As I gazed at his handsome face up close, I thought back to that fateful night just a few weeks ago. If he hadn't called out to me that night, I wouldn't even be here right now. Back then I'd been worried that I wouldn't get along with him or Gretel, but these days it felt like we were all good friends. <laughs> hey, what's taking you so long? Whoa! All of a sudden, Cinderella's voice snapped me out of my reverie. Now I get it. Quit borrowing her without my permission, got it? Cinderella pulled me over to him and casually put his arms around my shoulder. She's not your property. I know, but the two of us already made plans for today. It's not their fault, Cinderella. I wanted to talk to them. I attempted to mollify his bad mood. You're not off the hook for this either. You shouldn't be bringing random dudes into your room at your age. I flinched as he glared and shouted at me. I mean, seriously, we're 18. What's he, like, 20 or something? And he's like, I'm still young, and his dad's trying to marry him off. It says the guy who walked in here like he owns the place. I do own the place, thank you. I mean, he's not wrong. When he said, says the guy who walks in here and thinks he owns the place, and I was thinking he does, and that's going to be his line. So, are we done here? Yes, sir. I saluted him with my free hand. And then let's get going. Right. Cinderella started to turn, but stopped himself. Oh, wait a minute. Your ribbon's come undone. Hold still for a sec. In the blink, he retied my sleeve ribbon. And there. All done. Thank you. He's so good with his hands. Well, well, see you boys later. I waved to Gretel and Snow White as the two of us left the room. And so there I was on my long-awaited date with Cinderella. Our first stop was a certain well-known looking glass clothing boutique. Here, take this, and... Oh, I really like this one. Um, Cinderella? Here, go try them on. After loading me up with a mountain of clothes, he ushered me to the fitting room. W well, okay. Once I'd finished changing, I stepped out to find Cinderella and the shop clerk both smiling at me. Code realized vibes when we were trying on all the dresses. How's it look? Oh, my, that, oh, my, that looks wonderful on her. Of course, with her figure, she could pull off just about anything. Mature fashion sense really adds something, sir. 
The clerk deftly turned her compliment of me into a compliment of Cinderella Craft... Cinderella Crafty. Yeah, yeah. Here, try this next. With that, he handed me even more clothes. Again? How many outfits does that make this? We'd barely started the date, and I already was feeling like Cinderella's personal dress-up doll. Thirty minutes later... Ha! Huh. After trying on my tenth outfit, I was looking for the right moment to ask Cinderella if we could call it a day. Hey, you look pretty decent in all of them. All right, I'll take all ten. What? I could scarcely believe my ears. A sure thing. Thank you very much. I hurried back into the fitting room and changed back into the clothes I was originally wearing. At this point, we should look at getting her some... Oh, that's him. I was wrong. At this point, we should look at getting her some accessories, too. In that case, sir, might I recommend... Cinderella! Before the clerk could launch into her sales pitch, I cut in at the speed of light. What's the matter? Wait, why'd you change back? You could have worn that one out of the store. I take it you didn't like it. This brand is massively popular with the ladies, though. Yes, I know that. Although the Looking Glass world was merely a backwoods tourism town, we still had our fair share of cute boutiques. Personally, while I look like... While I'd like to stay up to date on all the latest styles and accessories, I didn't feel the need to own absolutely everything. And even if I did want them, I would never throw my money around like that. But there's actually something I want even more. I figured it would hurt his feelings to reject this gesture outright. So instead, I went with a different tactic. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? What is it? I'll buy it for you. Well, I kind of want it to be a surprise, and shopping bags will just get in the way. So let's not buy these clothes after all. We can just have them shipped to the house. Yes, we offer a shipping option. After a pause, I leveled Cinderella with a hard stare. We only have so much time, Cinderella, and I don't want to waste a second of it. A fair point, I guess. He seemed reasonably convinced. So... Sorry, I cancel all of it. Sorry about this. Maybe next time. That poor woman. We just fucked her over so hard. After successfully getting Cinderella out of the store, I led him through the shopping district. So what do you want? It's a secret. Now, where are we headed next? I forcibly changed the subject, hoping against hope he would just forget about it altogether. Wherever will you want to go is fine by me. Oh, I don't care where we go. I always have a good time when I'm with you. What if I want to go to the South Pole? Glaciers and penguins? Sounds like a blast! And personally, I couldn't handle anywhere colder than it is here. Then let's walk around for a bit and take in the warm sunshine. And that's the best you've got. <laughs> Feels like we're on a date, doesn't it? We are on a date. I knew this, of course, but hearing him say it flat out made me all giddy and bashful. I know, right? <laughs> Not gonna deny it this time? I smirked. I've changed my mind since then. So this is our first date, huh? What? I thought it was our second date. You denied it the first time, so that one doesn't count. It was just rehearsal. But this is the real deal. My first date ever. Wait. You've never gone on a date before. I've hung out with male friends, sure, but this is the first time it's ever been explicitly romantic. I'll bet those dudes thought they were dating you, though. You're a monster. No, those weren't dates. For something to count as a date, you have to be in an official relationship with, or at least romantically interested in, the other person. So if this is your first ever date, does that mean nothing ever happened with you and that one creep? Creep? Before I could ask who he was referring to, it hit me. Oh, you mean Kaguya? No, nothing. But you had feelings for him, right? I mean, yeah, I kind of do. Apparently Cinderella was still operating under some sort of misunderstanding. Although that was understandable, considering I hadn't explained how Kaguya and I knew each other. No, no, no. You've got the wrong idea. I like Kaguya as a person, but I'm not interested in him like that. I mean, I totally am, but... We're just... friends. Yeah. I can't help but notice that pause just now. You must be imagining things. Well, what about me? If you're asking whether I like you as a person, I should think that much is obvious. I know I know that. But what I'm saying is... Cinderella glanced at me, then sighed. Ugh, whatever. The next thing I knew... Oh my god, he's gonna kiss me? Whoa! He took my hand in his. If we're on a date, I figure we ought to act like it. But if you don't want to, I'll let go. Oh no, I don't mind. I stared at the ground shyly. 
so cute. There's not enough CGs in this game is my only complaint. Not enough CGs, but... Ta-da! I made us a picnic lunch. As soon as we got to the lake, I sat down on a bench and pulled out the food I'd made. You don't know how to take a goddamn day off, do you? Sure I do. I'm not working right now, am I? We could have ordered lunch from a cafe or something. But this is a date, and picnics are classic date fodder. Yeah, I guess. Your cooking's better than any old cafe anyway. That's a fact. Are you ready for your treat? And don't talk to me like I'm a dog. Just messing with you. Okay, let's start with the quint quintessential say ah trope. I stabbed a piece of chicken with my fork and held it up to his mouth. Uh, I am not doing that. Why not? You say ah not the pinnacle of the home-cooked meal experience? I refuse. Don't be shy. No one's around. You have nothing to be embarrassed about. Go on. Say ah. I made another attempt. Aw, oh, really hurts my feelings when you glare at me like that. A liar. I'm not lying. Believe it or not, my heart is actually rather fragile. Oh, I know. How about you feed me instead? Please, with my clever idea, put the fork down in front of him. And that doesn't make it any better. Ah. Uh, I closed my eyes, opened my mouth, and waited for Cinderella to feed me. I waited and waited, but nothing happened. <laughs> She's glaring at us. I slowly opened my eyes to find Cinderella's face inches from mine. And the next instant... Whoa! He grabbed my shoulders and pushed me down right then and there. I was like, was he coming in for a kiss while we were like, ah, uh, with our mouth open, that's going to be an awkward one. Cinderella? Positioned on top of me, Cinderella looked angry somehow. You ought to learn not to push people's buttons like that. Unfortunately for you, I'm a good guy. But not all men are like me. What if some creep forced you down like this? You think you could fight it? I wasn't trying to push your buttons. If you weren't doing it on purpose, and that makes it even worse. Maybe I'm a temptress by nature? No, maybe about it, you little devil. <laughs> I couldn't stop myself from laughing. And this isn't a joke. I fell silent at his admonishment. The air between us was so tense, I could scarcely feel the sunshine. I don't let my guard down around just anyone, you know. Right. Hey, Alice, would you... Suddenly Cinderella fell silent. Is something wrong? And no, it's nothing. He got to his feet, then helped me up. Thank you. I'm a gentleman, see. And so anyway, just make it quick. Huh? You wanted to feed me, right? Hurry up before I change my mind. With that, he closed his eyes and opened his mouth. Oh, right, okay. I hastily brought the fork full of chicken back up to his mouth. Say, ah. Uh. His lips closed around the fork. As I pulled away, he chewed and swallowed. How is it? Not bad, I guess. Now then, what to feed you next? We're not done. Oh, I'm very serious. I'm going to feed you a bite of everything. And you're going to tell me it tastes good. I shot him a playful wink. Classic me. <laughs> Classic me. I fucking love it. Hey, you little twerp. Say, ah. <laughs> ah. Next, I offered him a fork full of omelet. Grimacing, he reluctantly opened his mouth once more. Classic Cinderella. In the end, the two of us were just being ourselves. Once we'd eaten our fill, it was time to continue our date. That evening. Ah, looks like our date's finally coming to an end. Yep. Time really flies. Living together meant we'd never really have to say goodbye, and yet part of me didn't want the day to end. Hey, Cinderella, can we go over there? Uh, sure, whatever. Tugging on his arm, I led him to the heart of the shopping district. Oh, they changed the display. That's unfortunate. I peered through the window of the building on the corner. Last time we were here, it was decked out in glass figurines. This time, however, they had a red curtain hanging above a variety of desserts and champagne flutes. It looks like it's themed around a party of some kind. I guess it's that time of year. And they change them up pretty frequently. Just goes to show it's been a while. Not that long, but still. He gazed steadily at the window display as he spoke. Yeah. Oh well, it's nice to see something new for a change. It's always nice, sorry. Yeah. In the reflection of the glass, I could see his expression. 
so warm and gentle, I couldn't help but stare. What? Quit looking at me! Cinderella fidgeted shyly under my gaze. You really come to life whenever you're around glass crafts, you know that? Because I'm passionate about them, obviously. I'm not sure I'd call this class this glass crafts. I'm not sure I'd call this glass crafts, though. More like window art. He turned back to the window display. But it's still using glass, right? Those are glass, aren't they? I pointed at the champagne flutes. Each one was decorated with a snowflake pattern, but this is fucking adorable. Yeah. I can tell they use sandblasting techniques, too. What's sandblasting? It's a method of polishing metal or glass. And basically, you take a thin piece of glass, you strip off the protective coating, and blast it with an abrasive material in order to shape it. It's pretty recent tech. Oh, I see. And just for the record, it takes a lot of skill and specialized equipment, so don't even think about trying. Dang, you beat me to the punch. I sure did. I'm wise to your tricks now, little lady. Gah! He grinned and ruffled my hair. So what was it that you wanted, anyhow? Whatever might you be talking about. My messy hair swayed as I tilted my head in an exaggerated show of contemplation. And don't play dumb with me. You kept mentioning it every time I tried to buy you something, remember? <laughs> Busted. Am I making you uncomfortable? If so, tell me straightforward. I want these gifts to make you happy, and if they don't, then I'm wasting my time. Is that why you started showering me with gifts all of a sudden? To make me happy? Fine, you got me. <laughs> Honestly, nothing could have made me happier than hearing him say that out loud. I feel so warm and fuzzy inside. And tell me, what will it take to make you happy? I am happy. Really. I had a great time today. Even just the things you've said to me. Liar. Maybe you think you're slick, but I see right through you. I know you've got a secret. And that secret keeps you from ever truly being happy. In the reflection of the window, I could see the smile fall from my face. And once I find what it is, this little farce will come to an end. He grimaced and averted his eyes. Cinderella. My heart ached. I knew it. He's on to me. But he's not going to call me out on it, which means he wants to keep this going just as badly as I do. I balled my hands into fists. What is it you're worried about right now? Me? You? Your past? Our future? Are you scared? Are you looking for someone to confide in? Do you need someone to be there for you? Listen, Cinderella. You want to make me happy? Well, right back at you. I want to make you happy. No, I want to fix you. Fix me? You think you're Superwoman, do you? He gave me a self-deprecating laugh. That's right, I'm a superhero. So what part of me are you going to fix? I smiled softly and shook my head. I don't know. But I do know this. You want something, and you want it so bad you can taste it. It was something I'd wondered right from the very first moment I laid eyes on that photo of him. Why was it that he made that made fun activities seem so dull? Well, after the time I'd spent with him, I was starting to understand. He didn't hate having fun, nor was he bored by it. But he was missing something. And that something kept him from ever truly enjoying himself. Whatever it is, it's something money can't buy. Anyone may possess it, but not just anyone. But not just anyone. What is this, a riddle? Yep, and once you solve it, you'll finally be happy. I'll be happy. Yep, you'll get your happily ever after. Personally, I have faith that this fairy tale has a happy ending. Well, yeah, because we haven't made all the wrong choices yet. Wait. We still have several options for bad endings coming up. I looked over and met his gaze. His eyes were shining faintly. Literally, I think the next three choices, I think there's only three choices left, and they're all bad endings if we choose the wrong one. I got the guide. We're good. His eyes were shining faintly. Let's go home. It's getting late. I wouldn't want to make your brothers worry. I extended a hand to him. All right. He took my hand in his. No matter what happens, I won't let go. Oh, I know. Would you mind if we picked up some stuff for dinner on our way home? I spoke in a cheerful tone, purposely deflating the tension of the moment. Sure, I don't mind. Oh, what's on the menu for tonight? Good question. What do you feel like having? Anything's fine. I smirked mischievously. Anything? 
You sure? Even if it has lots of peas, which I know you hate? At this, Cinderella flinched. How do you know that? Who do you think does the cooking around here? I've seen you pick all the peas out of your food. What do I like, then? Easy, meat. I answered without hesitation, and a realization slowly dawned on Cinderella. In that case, I want to have roast beef. <laughs> In that case, I'll make you the best roast beef you've ever had. She's got to be like a world-class chef, because like not everybody can make roast beef, so I'm saying. Yeah, I sure fucking... You sure do pay attention when it comes to me, don't you? Whoopsie. Totally clicked off my screen. I'm also highly perceptive. Comes part and parcel with being smart. I'll quit bragging. He bopped me on the head. <laughs> but our antics quickly came to an end when a group of men in suits turned up. Well, well. You sure look like you're having fun. You people. Cinderella took one look at the group of men and froze. Hey there, Cinderella. Long time no see. How long's it been? Six months? That's strange. You didn't go shopping for once? Do you know them? I didn't know what this was about, but I could tell it wasn't good. Oh, we're leaving. He didn't answer my question. Instead, he grabbed me by the hand and started to lead me away. Uh, you're no fun. Let's chat for a bit, buddy. The leader of the group sees Cinderella by the arm. Out of my way! With a low growl, he wrenched himself free of the other man's grip. Sorry, pal, but we ain't going anywhere just yet. The man sneered. In the in a blink, the rest of the group had us surrounded. I apologize for startling the pretty lady. Are you Cinderella's new girlfriend? Great to meet you. Here's my card. With this, he handed me a small rectangular box. Is this a matchbox? What looks like yours. I bet we could get a ton of customers. If you're ever hard up for cash, feel free to stop by. Oh my god, it's like a strip club. Does he owe them money? Is he bad that bad at gambling? Ugh. Before I could get a proper look at the matchbox, Cinderella snatched it out of my hands. Wow, rude much? That was for her, not you. And nobody said you could talk to my employee. Employee? Oh, my mistake. You seem so close. Thought for sure there was something more going on. But if she's just an employee, then that's all the more reason to... You still don't know how to use your eyes, do you? Oh, it's a thug, always a thug. All muscle and no brains. Cinderella snorted dismissively. Excuse me? The hell did you just say? And one of the lackeys took the bait. Oh, did you miss that? Then let me repeat myself. The mere act of associating with human scum like you makes me want to puke. Takes one to no one. From scum, I'd like to see what that makes you. Cinderella! Things were looking rather precarious, and I clung to Cinderella's jacket. I knew he was only doing it to divert their attention away from me, but that didn't make it any less scary. At this, he squeezed my hand in what I could only assume was meant as a reassuring gesture. And you need something from me, and I'll hear you out. But not here. At your place. <laughs> Don't get so worked up, pal. All right, we'll leave you be. I take it you can uh, I take it you can guess why we turned up today, yeah. In that case, we'll make ourselves scarce. We're leaving men. At the leader's command, the lackeys obediently stepped out of our path. That's the spirit. Safe travels out there. With the grin, the man shot us a light hearted wave as he turned and led his crew down the street. So uh I waited until they were gone before I spoke. So much for a fun date. I'm sorry about that. He turned away from me. No, no, it wasn't your fault. I want to go home. Yeah. Okay. I am going to stop here because with the little pair of parts skipping through the five minutes, I mean, I think we're like about an hour, but anyway. So I'm going to stop here and we'll continue and finish maybe in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.